accidental cheating, we'll say accident, that happens more often than intentional. And this is why they become horny when stimulus happens, whereas guys are just horny and creating the stimulus. Female um, arousal, all right? So best to understand it by understanding your own, all right? So male arousal is, is really um, testosterone driven. And men have as much as 10 to 15 times more testosterone. I want to say that was the number than females. Okay, you guys can Google that. Let me know if that's correct. But I know it's significantly more. So here's the thing about testosterone. Testosterone helps. I mean, of course, then again, we're in a different time now. So a lot of young 20-something males have a lot less testosterone than even guys my age and, and certainly guys 50, 100 years ago. But that's a whole other topic, isn't it? Men and men do have less and less testosterone, unfortunately, because um, of their lifestyles and a lot of aspects to the way our society is. But anyway, that being said, though, Biologically speaking, either way, men have more than women in terms of testosterone. Testosterone tends to be one of the primary drivers to our sexual arousal. And so what testosterone does is it, it, it stimulates competition. So that's what people don't understand. Like people think, oh, a guy with high testosterone, he must be really violent or something like that or whatever. N no, not really. Okay. In fact, guy with high, healthy, high testosterone is... You, you can has more emotional self-control actually usually than someone with lower testosterone and therefore it could be less violent potentially. The guy with higher testosterone is only more violent if he's getting competition through violence, you see. So it's really a competitive drive. If he's being competitive through violence, sure, he'll be more violent. If he's being competitive through charity work, well, then he's going to really do a lot more charity work and, and try to beat everybody else out with the amount of charity work he's doing. You see what I mean? So testosterone stimulates that competition sort of mentality and even being competitive with oneself. And so that's also the stimulator for sexual arousal. So when a man's aroused, he's, you know, or, you know, has this, he's for 30 days out of the month, he's seeking sexual opportunities. He's going outward to seek things in a way, whether he means to or not. He could be a married dude and, you know, he's, he's monogamous, but he, he notices and seeks out those opportunities for sex. And, you know, even if it's just in his own mind. Right. And so that's where that drive is. So 30 days out of the month, that's what that dude is doing. Okay. He's proactive in his seeking out of uh, sexual opportunity because of the testosterone drive involved that makes him more proactive. Women are less proactive, more receptive. Okay. And so let's see if I can do a screen share here. Yep. Let's do it. Uh, so do a little screen share. And you may have heard Rolo has done good videos, several hours on this of ovulatory shift. But let's look at what it is. For women. So women, their hormonal drive for sex is actually estrogen driven and also just the reward chemicals that she gets from getting and achieving sex. Okay. So that's all of the happy chemicals you would get dopamine, serotonin afterwards, oxytocin. So it's the addiction and want or desire for those chemical rewards plus estrogen and a little bit of testosterone, but of course it's not as heavy as men that causes her sexual interest. And so we look at this little article here, um, this little study here. So primate females, especially women are, and, and I don't know what the difference is between primate females and women in this case, but whatever are unusually sexually active during non-fertile phases. Okay. But women's sexual interests are evoked in particular male features during fertile phases. So see, particular male features or sexual interest or behavior from men are particularly active during fertile phases. Okay. And so 
they're talking about something else of keep for another, maybe another thing, the dual sexuality, because that's a different thing. But women's attractiveness covers steroidal positively and progesterone negatively. So you look at her hormones here. Okay. So if you can see the diagram, the, this progesterone works kind of counter counter you know counteractive to her estroidal okay so when progesterone's up estroidal's down she's less horny okay less desiring sex but during this fertility window which is usually about a 7 day window in the month around the ovulation cycle that's when she is more you know spikes of estrogen or estroidal and is then looking or we'll say more receptive to sexual opportunity. It's not being driven by testosterone as much as it is other hormones, the reward chemicals or the rewards, psychological triggers, and, and those sorts of things. So there may be a couple days out of the month where she's extremely horny, but she's not actually, so a lot of times women aren't even consciously aware that that's what's going on. And so you have some women who are very horny and very aware that they're horny. And you have other, a lot of women who are just horny and they feel that, that angst that, you know, like they need something, they're craving something, but they don't really know. And if you were to ask them, I mean, by as best evidence as we could find under interviews and whatever, they wouldn't say, you know, I need the D right now. You know, they're just like, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't describe it at all. They wouldn't know how to describe it. You know, and so that's that's where you have a couple of different things there. So a woman's hypergamous brain will cause her to do things and put herself into situations where opportunities can happen. And she may not even be aware that she's doing it. It's just the instinct. This is when she's moving towards ovulation. She's wearing hoop earrings and red, for example. She's putting on more makeup. She's looking hotter. She's putting herself in more social situations with men. She's not realizing or recognizing that she's doing this. If you asked her, are you doing this to go hook up and get laid with other dudes? She would be like, no, of course not. What's wrong with you? You know, that's not what I'm looking for or whatever. You know what I mean? She would, she would be deceptive onto herself with what she's doing, you know? So she wouldn't necessarily know it it's that need for wanting to find a mate during that period and find the best genetic option she can find during that period is what causes this shift or change in behaviors now add to that a general horniness and stuff that happens that can be motivated through the outside world in other words if a guy makes a pass on her hits on her looks hot looks at her a certain way she can find herself getting very aroused and so this is how girls will put themselves in the circumstances like they're in a relationship, but they go and hang out at a party where there's some guy friends there and or they go to, you know, a bachelorette party or something. And then next thing you know, oh, let's look at that example, actually, because if you've ever been friends with male strippers, they will tell you the most savage stories that they that you'll ever hear. Okay. And bait generally at bachelorette parties, somebody is getting banged by that stripper. And unless they're all hideous and he chooses not to, but usually somebody is getting banged by that stripper. And that somebody is usually someone in a relationship. There's a high percentage, maybe one out of five at least, where it's the bride to be. Okay. Other times it's somebody who's, you know, high percentage of the time, it's, these women who are like already married or, you know, they have a boyfriend or their boyfriend standing up. That's what happens with these things. But they didn't start off going like, like a guy does where he's like, I'm going to go out on a Friday night and find a hot girl and see if she'll sleep with me at 2 a.m. Like we kind of have like a little bit more proactiveness there. She just sort of, this is going to be fun. They order a stripper. They think it's cool. The girl that's going to it, she might not even had been a part of the planning and then next thing you know, you know, she's, she's participating. She's going in that direction. And then all of her female friends are letting her do it. There's very few times that, um, you know, there's a female friend going, hey, wait a second. 
what are you doing? You're an idiot. Usually it's, they'll, they will sort of team up and cover for her, you know? So this is just sort of what happens in these circumstances. And I'm not saying it happens in every single circumstance, but this is what happens. And so, you know, this, this girl who ends up messing around, getting drunk and messing around with the stripper or with a guy on, you know, on, at some party or whatever, she didn't start off the evening that way, usually thinking that that's what I'm going to go do. But what happens is there's a receptive nature to their sexual arousal. So she has all this pent up arousal and maybe it's during this particular time of the month where the hormones are ripe for stuff to happen. She finds herself in the circumstance all of a sudden aroused feelings hit her like a ton of bricks. And then her level of arousal and level of drive to follow through with a sexual event or to make an orchestrate one is more powerful sometimes, a lot of times actually, than a male drive, okay? Male drives are more general and a female drive in some of these circumstances can be really high. And if you've ever experienced having a girl go feral, I call it, which is where her drive goes through the roof and she abandons all logic or reasoning or consequence, then that's what you're looking at. The women are susceptible to having that. Now, the more emotionally mature a woman is and the more protective of a relationship she is, the more she's going to create a lot of barriers in place so that doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? She's going to put a number of barriers in place so she's not at this point where her arousal is completely through the roof and she's making some decisions that are going to affect her long-term success. So that's the girl that's an LTR material, all right? But more and more women nowadays, they just don't do that. They just don't put barriers in place. They blame, they, they make it everybody else's responsibility. And if they do something that crosses boundaries or barriers, well, they just blame it on other people. And so that's unfortunately what you're dealing with. Let's face it. If you're a man, then you are probably dealing with problems and challenges with women. Now I've got some good news and some bad news for you. Your success with women literally boils down to one thing. The bad news is if you don't have it, nothing else will work. All of the money, good looks, and all of the best pickup and game skills out there will fail without you mastering this one thing. And that one thing is frame. The answers to ending your pain and suffering and to start living an amazing life with women is just one click away. Click the link and let's get started. So what does this mean for you in LTR? Does it, mean, it doesn't mean that you don't, that you have to be a paranoid, crazy person. Um, I had comments on my last one, you know, it's like, don't let her have friends. Like you, you can go do that. If you find a girl who's comfortable with you, with you dictating what her friendships are going to be like, I can guarantee you that you're going to have other problems to deal with in that relationship. Um, women see it as an existential threat or fear to not be able to build social bonds and have good social relationships with others. And that can get those kinds of things where you're controlling her friendships, more or less her relationships, if you will, and people she's involved with and social groups. If you get too controlling with that, that can cross into areas that we would consider abusive. And it's, you know, to, to my friend who commented on that in one of the previous videos about that, you've already been through that once and you haven't learned your lesson. So apparently... You need to go through that a few more times. Have at it, man. That's up to you. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, it's not that hard to vet out these women for their behaviors. It just takes skill set and for you not to be so <laughs> about it. Okay? Like I said, I mean that. Stop being a <laughs> right? And be emotionally self-controlled. And don't give away your emotions to a girl who hasn't proved that she knows how to keep healthy boundaries with the men in her life. You give her enough rope to hang herself in the dating process and you watch what her behavior is. Now, could she lie and deceive you or whatever? Sure, but you should be able to notice that through her behaviors when she's not in that circumstance. There's very few women who are 
come so good at being psychopathic that they can really, you know, lie to you that well. Usually, most of the times you'll notice differences in behavior, differences in just her boundaries, because again, she's not aware of it. So during this period where she's hornier, she should be seeking you, you out more. That doesn't necessarily mean initiating sex, although that does sometimes mean that. That the guys get hung up on the initiating sex thing because they don't understand how to pick up small social cues here with the women in their lives. They think that if she's not initiating sex, then she must not want sex. Look, some women have in their behavioral uh, triggers, you know, their their behavioral habits are used to initiating sex or are comfortable with that or they do that. Okay, and some women are not. That's going to be culturally based and that's just going to be how she grew up and a lot of previous experiences. You can always get her in a framework of initiating, but understand that some women are just not going to be as good at doing that as not. The question is, how receptive is she? Is she, it, when, when you're initiating on her, is she highly receptive, very horny and very eager, especially during those periods? Or is she not as receptive or doing it more in, a, in an obligatory sense or whatever. Is she seeking your attention? And I mean, non-sexual to try to create the opportunity for sex to happen during these periods when her hormones are high. That's what you need to look at. If during this period of ovulation in and around ovulation, a, you know, seven to 10 day period, I'd say, you know, about seven days up until, you know, five to seven days before and a couple days after, if she is not seeking your attention to so that opportunities can be created for sex to happen and she is instead seeking out attention and opportunities elsewhere, then and that, that means going out with the girlfriends more, hanging out with more different social groups where she's going to be in contact with other men, going out of town, going on vacations during this period. Um, more like spontaneous vacation or trips or whatever, so on and so forth. That's a red flag. That's a warning sign that she's not seeking the sexual attention from you, right? Again, they're receptive. And so in other words, they get horny and they'll get horny. They'll, they'll get sexually interested and horny almost any day of the month, regardless when you initiate and you're attractive and you seduce them. And this is why seduction is so important. And what you actually do with a girl is you build repetitions of seducing them and you build experiences with them that are intense for them. You build and increase the intensity of these sexual experiences where now she anchors her sexual pleasure, her experiences with you instead of anchoring it to opportunity out in, out in the marketplace. And so by being good for her sexually and creating great experiences for both you and her that's what that's what will anchor her drives to seeing you as that option and not something else and then that will create a scenario where she puts barriers in front of the sexual marketplace in herself so she doesn't find herself in that situation where all of a sudden she's going feral for some random guy that she met at a party or some coworker or some guy that she's been developing an emotional connection with for weeks that, you know, is, is, is her coworker or friend, right. Or some guy who's staying over that you've trusted or something. And then she's, you know, getting laced and creating opportunities for sex to happen with that guy and crossing boundaries. Right. Again, accidental cheating will say accident that happens more often than intentional. And this is why they become horny when stimulus happens, whereas guys are just horny and creating the stimulus, okay? So when you understand that, that means that you need to, even when she's sort of feeling dull and maybe she just is, doesn't seem like she's in that mood, find ways to slowly create that in a calibrated way, create that stimulus for her because it may snap her out of that state and put her in more of an aroused state. And then you guys can have a good time there. And the more frequency you get with you creating arousal for her, the more anchored 
those sexual feelings will become to you and not to other dudes in the marketplace.